Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I accept your hot takes, your unpopular opinions, your tough questions, and I respond to the best ones literally in this video series. Let's go. Go. Logic had the best comeback in rap ever. Honestly, how many other artists like drop albums on the level of a supermarket and uh, confessions of a dangerous mind and then they follow through with fucking No Pressure? I know No Pressure is not the greatest album ever or anything, but like, goddamn, what a contrast. Celebration, great track. Great fucking track. Amazing production, good flows, witty lines, charisma. Charisma from Logic. And then compare that to Lemon Drop. Le le lemon Drop, lick your Lemon Drop, drop, like what the fuck? Everyone who listens to JPEG Mafia wishes they weren't white. What about the people who listen to JPEG Mafia that aren't white? Anybody who is white uh, and listens to JPEG Mafia seriously and, you know, really kind of dives into his lyrics and his ethos and, and agrees with a lot of what he's saying. Um, you know, if, if you're not a moron who just, like, you know, gets mad about their skin color and just, like, you know, takes on a bunch of white guilt that doesn't actually help anybody or change anything, uh, I think what you really want is to dismantle whiteness as an institution, a hierarchy, a power structure that oppresses everything underneath it. That's what uh, real you know, fucking JPEG Mafia fans want. We need a hip hop radio head. Isn't that Kendrick Lamar? I mean, you, you, is, isn't the chart out there that compares the album to album thing and the, 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 and everything, you know, like Hail to the Thief is damn and, you know, overly dedicated is like Pablo Honey and everything. It look, the, the, the chart is out there. It's Kendrick. Pancakes are worse than waffles because waffles have texture and look cooler. Hard agree. I, I think uh, waffles are cooler looking than, pan, than, than pancakes. Pancakes are just too floppy, man floppy and when you put a bunch of syrup on them, soggy, soggy as well. But you know, I don't know how to make vegan waffles, so I, I, it's been a while since I've had a waffle. Rap production has way too many high hats. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't find it cool and it's somewhat of a trend. Well, I mean, certainly it's a trend, but I mean, uh, how, how many high hats are too many? Like a lot of the, you know, production that you're listening to is just like triplets and um, I mean, pfft, damn, there's like tons of disco where the hi-hats are there and they're doing sixteenths. That's even more hi-hats. That's more than... There's dance punk where it's like literally 30 seconds, dude. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sick of the hi-hats. I mean, I think the hi-hats are there. They serve a purpose. It's, it's literally like an institution of percussion. The hi-hat is not going anywhere. Uh, the hi-hats just really kind of suck when they're placed terribly or they're mixed too high or even sometimes too low, but mostly too high. Regular show, Adventure Time is better than Adventure Time. Um... <sighs> I enjoy regular show, but I disagree. I really disagree. I think Adventure Time generally, uh, while regular show can get more into absurdist humor, and I do like that, uh, and also even, you know, tacitly uh, stoner humor, um, I, I think Adventure Time is a lot more charming in terms of its characters, its storyline, its overall aesthetic, and bro, the lore is way fucking better. The lore on Adventure Time is so fucking deep and rich and amazing. Like, you can watch every season over and over and over and, like, still be picking up hints and little details about the world they exist in and why it is the way it is. Not so much with regular show. They live in a fucking park. Anthony Fantano is one of the only YouTubers whose content doesn't age, and no matter how old the video is, the experience still feels like it just came out the other day. You know, unless my opinion on a record has massively changed, for the most part, yes, and that is intentional. I try to box my main channel content in so that, to an extent, it is evergreen. I mean, it's never going to be evergreen with every video I put out because most of the reviews I 
do are on records that frankly people are only going to care about for a very small fraction of time. But uh, there are quite a few reviews and records that I have uh, covered that end up being classics, end up sort of, you know, withstanding the test of time and people still love them and revere them and come back to them and are still curious about like, oh, what do other people think about this record? Let's have a discussion about this record. Let's look up a review for this record. And uh, when that sort of happens, you know, to sort of go back and see a review of something that I've covered when an album is worth kind of bringing up again and again and again and again, yeah, the review still functions uh, when it's three months old, six months old, two years old, doesn't really matter uh, how old it be. Song parody is a dead subgenre of comedy and not very funny for the most part. How can you say this? This is so blatantly not true. I mean, while yes, uh, Weird Al Yankovic uh, has not birthed out, you know, like a million other little baby fucking Weird Al Yankovics and everything, uh, but still, um, the idea and the concept of song parody as a comedy medium has kind of left the mainstream, left the music industry mostly, and has kind of turned into a semi-cash cow just in the social media world. Like, all over social media, on various social media platforms, you can find parodies of pop songs and hip-hop songs. <laughs> The Foo Fighters are a proto-emo slash pop punk band? How is, how is this even a th how, how can you think this? The first Foo Fighters album came out in 1995. Uh, emo and pop punk were both definitely things by the year 1995. Rites of Spring and uh, Screeching Weasel were, were both you know, a thing. Kiss Land was ahead of its time, extremely underrated. Only original EXO fans find Kiss Land a masterpiece, and it deserves way more credit for mastering the feel of cinema and and Japan. I've, I mean, I can certainly say vocally and aesthetically the sound of Kissland is really pristine. I just think a lot of the songs stagnate. You know, aesthetically, surely a beautiful project, but um, at a lot of redundancy as well, to my ears. Knowing a song was done in one take makes it ten times cooler. <laughs> I mean, that depends if it sucks. If it's a sucky-ass song, then it's not really cool that it took, you know, one take. It really depends on the quality of the song, you know? Uh, if, the so if the song's amazing and it only took one take and it's totally live, no overdubs, anything like that, then yeah, I, I guess that's kind of cool. I'd eat dem fries. Meek, oh, Meek Mill has fries all over his legs. They do look crunchy. Those fries do look like they have maintained their crunch, honestly. Like, yeah, you could totally take those fries off of his legs and probably eat them. Dip him in some ketchup. Quatica is an amazing artist. He is well established as more than just a YouTube rapper. His music as of 2018 has great production, and he is an amazing and versatile artist and a great rapper. He needs more respect on his name. I haven't been a fan of all of his stuff. I have had my criticisms of his work, but I will say that uh, I, I feel like he does his thing well enough to the point where he shouldn't be considered just a YouTube rapper. Like, he's producing material that is as quality aesthetically, you know, production-wise, performance in terms of flow and delivery. Like, he's delivering industry quality stuff. While YouTube rap and the YouTube rap scene will continue to define him surely, I don't think he should just be relegated to that corner. L and W are terrible terms. I think it mostly depends on how they're applied. It can be funny and very just straightforward to uh, you know, sort of just be like L, W, whatever, just to show support or show dislike of a certain thing. But when you have an entire crowd of people just repeating that same fucking shit lingo over and over and over and over and over, it just becomes a bit of a hive mind thing. And your eyes kind of glaze over because of the severe lack of creativity and just a general inability to express oneself in a distinct way. The cover art made at least half of the success of Currents by Tame Impala, and also made a lot of people think that it is so cool, experimental, psychedelic, 
album, while it's just a good blend of pop, disco, and electronic music. I don't think you can attribute the success of Currents just to its cover art, or even mostly to its cover art. I would need to see some kind of study or some verification. I would need to see a bunch of motherfuckers in the comments fessing up and being like, yo, I only listen to Currents because of the cover art, and I only enjoy it because of the cover art. Honestly, I think the industry put Kevin Parker and that record right place, right time, to the point where it was exposed to an audience that typically doesn't get a lot of exposure to psychedelic pop, honestly. Like, how many places in the mainstream do you actually find legitimately psychedelic pop music? The closest thing that I could think to that at the moment is, like, Flaming Lips. Google's definition of music is incorrect. Vocal or instrumental sounds, or both, combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. I don't think this definition is entirely wrong. I think that this would sort of, um, certainly apply as music. I mean, if there was something that was meeting this criteria, I don't think you could deny its music. I think the problem with this definition is that it's maybe a little too specific. It doesn't leave a whole lot of wiggle room for, you know, musical art forms that aren't trying to, you know, achieve these ends or display these characteristics. And that is it. That has been this episode of, of Let's Argue, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, watching. You're the best. Thank you for arguing as well. Over here next to my head is another, another, another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, <laughs> let's argue forever.